What's up guys, welcome back to your Heroclix headquarters. Today we've got a cool 300 point modern age Thunderbolts team build for you. Uh, I'm pretty sure somebody asked me to do one of these a while ago. It took me a little bit longer than I thought to get to it, so I'm sorry for that. But without further ado, let's check out the team. All right, so to get us started, we're of course going to bring in Baron Zemo, the new super rare from Captain America and the Avengers. He's gonna be really the backbone of this team. Uh, we can take a look here at his card to see what he does. Uh, he has this trait that says, During game setup when establishing theme teams, you may treat Masters of Evil and Thunderbolts as a single named keyword. So this is going to help us out a lot. We're going to use a couple Masters of Evil. So I might be kind of cheating when I said this was a Thunderbolts team, um, but we got a couple Masters of Evil that are going to join the Thunderbolts. Uh, now he also has this trait, Assembled Bolts and Masters. Um, a lot of characters on this team have this trait, so I'll just read it this first time. Once per turn, when Baron Zemo hits after resolutions, you may roll a d6. On a 5 or 6, if your force has 3 or more friendly characters with a Masters of Evil or Thunderbolts keywords, remove an action token from Baron Zemo or give an action token to the hit target. If your force has 6 or more, do both. Um, now we will end up with six or seven characters on our team. Um, at the end, I'll explain that. So we will get the full effects of that trait. Um, and then his damage power here is also really good. We're gonna build around that. Um, it says leadership and outwit. Uh, when Baron Zemo uses leadership and succeeds, you may choose a Marvel team ability that isn't uncopyable. And as long as he is on the map, friendly characters with the Masters of Evil or Thunderbolts keywords can use the chosen team ability until he chooses again. Um, so that is super awesome. Uh, we're gonna abuse that a little bit. And he also has a special on his movement that gives him charge, running shot, and stealth. Um, so he's incredibly good with all of those specials. He also has the Masters of Evil team ability that gives him um, colossal stamina. And as you can see, he has a 65 or a 45 point line. We're gonna be playing him at the 45 point line because his stats are exactly the same and we still get use of all of those specials. Um, and as you can tell by his dial, he's gonna be a good attacker at two if we need it. He's got charge, running shot, stealth, 11 attack with precision strike, 18 defense with mastermind, and three damage with that leadership outwit special. So he brings a lot to the team. All right, and next we're going to bring in Atlas. This guy is crazy at either point value. We're gonna be playing him at the full 50 points. So here's a quick look at his card. We're gonna be playing him at the full 50 point line so we can get the full use of that long dial with the good uh, damage reducers, good stats, four damage super strength to start with. He's pretty crazy for only 50 points. He's got that giant reach too. Um, now he also, of course, has the Assembled Bolts and Masters trait. Um, and then he has this other trait, Double Dose of Pin Particles, free until your next turn. Atlas has Colossal Size and modifies his attack and damage values by plus one. So he's gonna be swinging with a 12 attack, five damage, potentially seven damage uh, if you're using a heavy object with super strength. He also has a special on his movement free if no friendly character has been placed this turn. Choose an opposing character within six squares that attacked Atlas or damaged a friendly character since your last turn. Place Atlas such that he can make a close attack targeting the chosen character, then do so. So of course this can combo with his trait. Um, you can give him that plus one attack and damage so he can actually have a good chance of hitting. He can have colossal size to have that three square reach for those close attacks. So if he gets knocked onto his last couple clicks there, he basically becomes a colossal retaliator for us, which is gonna be uh, it's going to come in a lot of handy. All right, so to bring some support to the team, next we're going to bring in Alex Wilder from the Secret Wars Battle World set. So take a quick look at his card here and see what he does. He's got this trait on the run. He can use stealth and sidestep, but only if uh, opposing characters within four squares of him. He also has the traitor trait that says shape change. What's per force when Alex Wilder is KO'd? Do not remove him from the game. Instead, after resolutions, place him in the square he last occupied. On his starting click, he is now friendly to your opponent's force. So you have to be careful if he dies, your opponent will get him on his top click uh, in the square he last occupied on their force. 
He also has this damage power free an opponent chooses to outwit perplex probability control. Alex Wilder can use the chosen powers until your next turn. So your opponent chooses two that he can use and he just can't use one of them. Um, now if your opponent says that he can use perplex and outwit, he still makes uh, good use of theme team probability control. So don't forget that he can be our theme team prover if they don't give him a prob. Um, he does have mastermind there. So when you combo that with the fact that he has traded stealth and shape change, um, he's actually a very hard 25 points to get rid of, and he brings a lot of support to our team. And the next character I want to talk about is Trickshot, the uncommon from Captain America and the Avengers. Trickshot will also be doing a lot of work for our team. He also has the Assembled Bolts and Masters trait, um, and he has this awesome damage power that says once per turn, when a friendly character within four squares in line of fire uh, would be hit by a ranged attack, you may roll 2d6 and add trickshot attack value. If your result is higher than your opponent's attack total, the attack is evaded. So essentially it's like him shooting their attack out of the air with his own arrow. Uh, and as you can see on his dial there, for only 50 points, he is insanely good. He's got running shot with 8 range, a 12 attack, precision strike, and a 17 defense with willpower, and then he's got that special damage power that can help keep our guys protected from range attacks. And now, the main reason I actually want to play him is because for only 50 points you get that 12 attack, and one of the best uh, team abilities to copy with Baron Zemo is going to be the Sinister Syndicate team ability. Now this is kind of the same strategy I used on one of my other team builds with the Avengers abusing the captain's uh, ability to pick a team ability and having a bunch of wild cards to copy Sinister Syndicate and copy Hawkeye's 12 attack. So this is kind of the same idea. Now to enhance this even further, we're gonna bring in the Beetle from Earth X. So now to take a quick look at the Beetle's card. He has got this trait that lets him begin the game with the beetle pod equipped. And to take a quick look at what the beetle pod does, it gives him flight, toughness, and speed plus two. So that's gonna allow him to carry some people, move over some stuff, gives him a lot longer reach with his running shots and stuff, and toughness to reduce the damage. So that's gonna be really helpful. But another cool trait he has is the Sinister Six United, uh, which gives him stealth, but only if your force has three or more characters. Improve movement hindering, but only if your force has five or more characters. And then modify all combat values by plus one, uh, but only if your force has exactly six characters. So since our char our team is going to have at least six characters, we will get some use out of that plus one to all stats. And then he has this awesome trait that says leadership. When a friendly character within six squares replaces its attack value, Using the Sinister Syndicate team ability, uh, modify the attack plus one. Or modify its attack plus one. Uh, so that's going to be really great. If we can borrow that 12 attack from Trick Shot, we're going to be able to get our guys up to 13 attack or more. And we're going to be playing him at the 50 point line, since we're most likely going to be um, borrowing somebody's attack. The 11 on his 75 point doesn't really that matter that much and everything else is basically the same. And he's gonna start with some perplex, so that's gonna help us out too. And don't forget, he's got that traded leadership um, to help remove tokens, because we don't have a lot of willpower on this team. And now the next figure I wanted to bring in uh, over here is Mach X, or Mach 10, however you wanna say it. And then we'll take a look at what he does here. So Mach X has, again, the assembled bolts and masters trait. Um, and then he also has this cool trait, free, choose a standard attack power printed on this card. Mach X can use the chosen power till your next turn. And we are also gonna be playing him at the 50 point line, because again, we are probably going to be uh, replacing his attack value to be better than a 10. And he's also gonna be helping us out with that flying running shot, six range. He can pick any of those attack powers he needs. Um, he's got that perplex to help out the team. And uh, also important to note, he has improved targeting, ignores hindering terrain, uh, so he can shoot at those stealthy characters. And he's going to be our main ranged attacker, and Atlas pretty much is our main close attacker. Now there's a lot of places we can go from here. We have 30 points left, if you've been counting along at home, 
So what I'm going to do is bring in a seventh character here and play Jolt here at her. She's only 25 points, so she makes for a good little secondary close combat attacker. And we'll look at her card here. So we can see she also has the Assembled Bolts and Masters trait. She has this special movement power, can't sit still, flurry, sidestep. Uh, when she uses sidestep after resolutions, roll a d6 on a 4 through 6. Jolt can use sidestep again at no cost. This can repeat. So she's only three clicks long, but she could potentially sidestep over and over and over again. She does have three range, uh, 10 attack, precision strike, and two damage. Um, and then the flurry on that special too. So, so now the main reason I wanted to use Jolt as a seventh character, the beetle now has that trait that when you have exactly six characters, you will get plus one to all stats. But having seven characters, for one, will give us uh, better odds of rolling for map, and once you actually get into the middle of a fight, and once you lose a character, and your opponent might think, now they're starting to win, that's when you can really surprise them by, you know, running shotting out with the beetle, getting plus one to all stats, um, maybe potentially getting him next to trick shot to get that 12 attack, and again, when, he's, uh, when you're replacing the attack value with the Sinister Syndicate team ability, he gives everybody plus one if they're within six of him. Um, that will include himself. So he's going to have a 13, 14 because of his plus one to all stats trait. And then he's going to have a three damage, perplex it up to four damage if you want to. Uh, he can come out swinging with a big attack out of nowhere. Once, you know, maybe you have Jolt sidestep up into their face first turn and uh, maybe she gets blasted down real quick and then having Beetle come out of nowhere with that big attack value is gonna potentially get you a surprise kill on your opponent. And now the good thing about this team is if you didn't want to do that, you could take her out, you could play, you know, Mach X at his full 75 point value, you could play the Beetle at his full 75 point value, um, you could even play Baron Zemo at 65 instead of 45 if you wanted to give him some more life. So another main reason I wanted to play Jolt, giving us seven characters, giving us extra to map roll, is because we're going, for the last five points of our team, we're going to play this map bonus. If you guys have got the Fantastic Four starter set yet, then you know what map this is. This is Doom's Castle. It's really great. It's five points. Um, nobody on the, our force has Latveria, so we won't get it for zero. But the location bonus is at the beginning of the game, choose a friendly character once per turn when the character rolls for leadership you may re-roll that result and then if they're named dr doom they get plus one to roll but now the main thing we're going to use that for is of course to pick baron zemo um, this will give us a uh, once per turn re-roll on his leadership and so that way whenever he rolls his leadership to choose a copyable Marvel team ability for them all to share basically just gives us much better chances of actually getting that off. Because this team is great, but if you don't get that going quick and choosing a Sinister Syndicate or maybe any other team ability you might need, it's not going to be as effective. Another option, if you don't have this map and maybe you don't want to play Jolt, another character, a couple other characters that I might suggest if you did want to keep to the seven character strategy would be uh, perhaps the Tinkerer from Earth X for only 30 points. He has a damage power that gives you a power enhancement and as a power action he can generate a standard light or heavy object which is going to be great for Atlas. Um, can maybe carry him around to get some empower. Um, you could get some enhancement for your other guys. Um, you could generate objects for Atlas to hit people with. Another great 30-point character that I want to talk about um, is Songbird, the super rare from Captain America and the Avengers. She also has that Assembled Bolts and Masters trait, and she also has another trait that says Barrier as Free, but only to generate one marker. And then if you generate it next to some other train markers, you can get rid of those, which is pretty cool. If your opponent has like a barrier team, um, it can help you get through all of that. Um, and for only 30 points, on her 30 point line, she does have sidestep pulse wave, which um, is going to be great, or just even to carry people around with a flight could be helpful. But like I said, my preference would be using Jolt and the map bonus to get the reroll on Baron Zemo. And the consolation for the map bonus also 
lets you have a once per game automatic success for leadership. So even if you somehow fail map, um, you still guaranteed one success on his leadership role to get that team ability that you need. So I just wanted to show you a little bit more of the general strategy of this team. So let's say after you've moved up a little bit, um, you're gonna wanna make sure you keep uh, Baron Zemo safe, kind of in the back, kind of in the middle maybe, where he can leadership some people. You do wanna keep Beetle back um, until after one of your characters has been killed. Um, so that way you can get that surprise big damage shot on somebody and after um, Baron Zemo has rolled his leadership and given everybody Sinister Syndicate team ability Don't forget that everybody within six squares of Beetle is going to be able to get plus one attack if they replace their attack value with Sinister Syndicate That's the main strategy here. So let's say we have uh, you know Atlas here charging in front of our trick shot replacing his attack to a 12. If he's already used his pin particle thing, that's going to give him a 13. Um, and then another another boost from Beetle giving him a 14. Um, that's 14 attack. You've already got plus one damage from his trait, giving him a five damage, plus two possibly from a heavy object. So we're talking about 14 attack, seven damage from a 50 point character is nuts. And then again, you know, you can have Jolt sidestep, um, borrowing trick shots, 12 attack, giving her a 13 for flurry or for a three range shot, or even, you know, sidestep her up again to be in front of him. Even borrowing the 11 will still give her a 12 so long as she remains within six squares of beetle. Basically, you're going to want to keep most of your characters together, keeping Alex Wilder off to the side somewhere, hopefully hiding him in hindering terrain for that stealth. Um, giving him that perplex or prob or outwit, whatever your opponent chooses to give him, really. Um, and then, of course, you have Mach X can choose a lot of different attack powers, depending on what you're going against. If you're going against, you know, a team, like a swarm team, kind of like this one, Energy Explosion is going to be helpful. If you're going against, you know, a big one-man army type figure, you might want that Penetrating Blast. So whatever you really need out of him, and again, you know, running shot him up next to trick shot, getting that 12, making it a 13 from him is going to be nuts. Keep rolling. You got a re-roll of his leadership from the map, so a lot, not a lot of characters on this team have willpower, but we got two leadership characters here, so that helps us a lot with the willpower problems. The main thing with Jolt, she can be pretty good on her own getting some damage in for only 25 points, but you want to keep pushing her up and keep pushing her up and uh, kind of force your opponent to kill her um, just so that you get that six characters exactly for Beetle. Uh, that way he could potentially running shot, you know, get himself adjacent to trick shot. He's got that 12 attack, 13 from his trait, and then, you know, you could perplex his attack to 14. You could perplex his damage up. Uh, if you want to three and he have four from his trait. Lots of good synergy here, lots of good combos. Baron Zemo even can come in. He's got running shot or charge, whatever you need to do. You know, maybe you wanted to charge him up here in front of him. He's still within six of Beetle. Um, and then don't forget that trick shot here. Keep him protected too. Try and keep him behind some of your bigger guys um, because he does give you that kind of rollout against range attacks. Um, so don't be too worried about Atlas getting shot down because he's a giant. You know, maybe you perplex up Trick Shot's attack up to a 13 or 14. Um, it can help you a lot with keeping your guys protected from ranged attacks. And yeah, there's a lot of good synergy here, a lot of good combos. These are just a few things I wanted to show you guys. Obviously, this isn't the best placement, but it just kind of gives you some ideas. So I want you guys to let me know down in the comments uh, what version of this team you prefer. If you would maybe take off Jolt to play one of these guys at their higher point values, let me know. Uh, maybe if you don't like the map bonus and you wanted to play like an object instead, uh, let me know if you guys would adjust this team in any way. But that about does it for this team build. All right guys, so as usual, if you liked this team, go ahead and leave me a like on this video. Um, let me know in the comments again if there's anything about it you'd change or do differently um, or if you played a team like it let me know I'd love to hear that stuff and don't forget to click that subscribe button so you don't miss a video until next time This has been HeroClix Headquarters signing off